Welcome, my name is Tim, and in this short video, I'm going to guide you through the proper procedure for diagnosing a faulty low-pressure cutout on the residential air conditioner. Now, the low-pressure cutout is a safety switch, and it's shown right here on the suction line where it enters the compressor. Uh, this is a fixed control. It's not adjustable like it is on some larger commercial systems. And the function of the low-pressure cutout is to provide loss of charge protection. In other words, if you had a leak in the system uh, and the refrigerant leaked out, uh, that could result in overheating the compressor if it continued to run. So the low-pressure switch or low-pressure cutout senses the pressure in the low side of the system, and if the pressure falls to an abnormally low level, it will open its contacts and turn the compressor off, protecting it. So to start with, we're going to go to the thermostat and make sure that the thermostat is calling for cooling. So click on the selector switch. This will turn it to the cool position. This will also turn down the temperature setting of the thermostat below the room temperature. Always refer to the procedure guide at the top. Click OK after each step. Next, we want to take a brief inventory of which electrical loads are running. And as evidenced by the spinning blue arrows, we can see our indoor blower motor or indoor fan is operating. So we're going to click yes on the procedure guide. Next, we go to the outdoor unit. And uh, I've taken the cover off here, but we can, we can see that the outdoor fan is not operating. Again, if you need to rotate or zoom in, you can. So we're going to click no there. Now our compressor, well, we got to investigate that a little bit. Um, sometimes you'll be able to hear the compressor, obviously. If you can't hear it, uh, it's always a good idea to verify it with a clamp on ammeter. So once we've taken the cover off, we're going to click OK, and we're going to place the jaws of the clamp on ammeter at this glowing orange hotspot. And this is the common wire of the compressor. And as we can see here, we've got zero amps, and it doesn't appear to be cycling. It just It's a straight zero amps, meaning the compressor's not running at all. So we're going to click zero amps on the procedure guide. Our next step is to measure to see if voltage is being received at the contactor. Now, I'm going to slide the meter over a little bit. The contactor is located right here. And basically, the contactor is going to get a signal from the thermostat through the two pressure switches and then pull its contacts in once its coil energizes. And this will apply power to both the outdoor fan and the compressor. Briefly, let's take a look at the wiring diagram. So I'm going to click on the indoor unit wiring diagram. And here's our contactor coil right here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to place the leads at these coil connections. Let me store the wiring diagram and let's do this. So we're going to place one of the leads at the blue wire here, and we're going to place one at the yellow wire connection on the other side of the contactor. And based on this, we've got zero volts, which means that our contactor coil is not receiving voltage. Now, again, let's go back to the diagram for just a second. If we look at the placement of the meter leads on the indoor unit wiring diagram, we can see we don't have 24 volts here at the coil. What this means is that more than likely we have either a open high pressure cutout, a low pressure cutout, or possibly our thermostat is faulty. Now we know we have 24 volts coming out of the transformer because in fact the indoor fan relay actually energized and turned on the indoor blower. We verified that earlier. So our next step now that we verified the contact was not receiving voltage is to check the pressure switches. So our next step is we're going to place one of the leads right on that blue connection, or we can leave the lead we had there. The black lead we're going to place on the yellow wire coming from the T-stat right at this wire nut here at the bottom. So this is verifying that we have 24 volts coming back from the yellow wire and yellow terminal on the T-stat. Uh, to the low voltage circuit within the outdoor unit. So this simply verified that our thermostat's good. Again, let's take a look at the indoor unit wiring diagram to show you this. If you look, we left one lead here. We placed the other lead on the other side of the thermostat at the yellow connection where it's coming into the outdoor unit, and we have 24 volts. So again, our thermostat's not the problem. This now narrows our focus to the two pressure switches here, the LPCO and the HPCO. Now our next step is to move this red lead to the low pressure cutout. In other words, we're going to verify if we have power coming out of the low pressure cutout. We've already verified at this wire nut that we do in fact have power from the thermostat and leading to the low pressure cutout at the blue connection. And I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit on the low pressure cutout so you can see this. We're going to place the red lead at the wire nut leaving the low pressure cutout. 
And when we do this, we have a voltage drop. We have zero volts here, which verifies that the low pressure cutout is in fact open. Now again, let's review this on the wiring diagram for just a second here. And when we do that, we can see the placement of our leads showing that we had power here at the yellow and blue connection, but we don't have power on the other side of the low pressure cutout leading to the high pressure cutout. So this verifies that our low pressure cutout is in fact open. Now in most cases, an open low pressure cutout is gonna be the result of a refrigerant leak or possibly inadequate airflow uh, across the indoor coil or evaporator coil. This in both cases would cause the pressures to drop and cause the low pressure cutout to open its contacts. So we measured zero volts, so we're gonna click no on the procedure guide now next we're going to place our hoses from our digital gauge manifold at the proper connection points. The red hose going to the liquid line high pressure connection and the blue hose going to the low pressure suction line connection. And when we do this we can see that our low side pressure is 295 PSIG. Well that low pressure cutout will open its contacts if the pressure falls to 80 or lower. So in this case, that low pressure cutout should be closed. There's definitely sufficient pressure there to close it. So if we look at our procedure guide at the top, as it says, you know, is the low side pressure below the cutout setting of 80? And it's not. Um, so the answer is no here. At this point, we have a faulty low pressure cutout. Now, if the pressure on that low side was below 80, we'd want to investigate a potential leak in the system or possibly poor airflow across the evaporator coil. But in this case, since we have sufficient pressure to close that LPCO, we're going to replace it. So we're going to turn the disconnect off, click OK in the procedure guide, and we're going to click on the low pressure cutout and click replace on the menu. And this should solve our problem. Now our next step is to turn the power back on and watch one full cycle of operation to make sure all other loads are operating properly. It's also a good idea to pull the indoor filter and replace it if necessary. This is good added value for the customer. Once we've turned the disconnect back on and we've verified one full cycle of operation, we can go up to the residence and verify that cool air is being delivered through the registers. And we can see here from the graphic here of this floor register that we do in fact have cool air. One last thing here, if you want to review any of these steps in this procedure, simply click this top left icon and you can review each of the steps that we took in this process. Good luck on all your future service calls and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Do you want to try 3D simulations and VR HVAC training yourself? Then visit interplaylearning.com to start a free trial today.